Hello, and welcome to Shara's Craft Haven. Today we're going to be taking a walk through Imager. Uh, it's a free online software. They do have offline and subscriptions for purchase if you don't want to have advertisements. Um, but it is a great way, especially if you're just starting out, um, to prepare your image files for uh, engraving, so especially photos. So as always, like, subscribe, um, add your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get to it. So here you can see the web page, uh, imag-r.com. Um, you'll notice there are a few features up here. Um, the only one that you need to use before doing the imager would be background removal. Um, we're not going to play with that today, but that's just something to know. You want to do that first. It's not perfect, um, but it's something that if you don't have another software, it can be helpful. All right, so we're going to click on Imager, and then we're going to click Upload, and then we'll start with this one. All right, you can see that it is uploaded. Uh, it's going to be black and white. And then the next option we have is crop. Um, you are able to decide if you want to crop um, one way or another, or you can uh, force it to crop in a square. And so as you move one side in, it will keep it square. Um, you can round the edges. I typically do that when I add a cut line. So I just leave it the way that it is. We will crop it. And you can see it takes a little bit of time um, since it's processing online to do what we're asking it to do. And once it loads, All right, and we'll see our cropped image. Um, you can resize. So um, if you want it to be a specific size, so we'll say we want this to be six by six inches, and then the DPI you can, um, you can edit. So I like to bump it up um, to 318 if I'm gonna be engraving on wood. That way when pixels are dropped out later on, does not affect. So here there's a few different tools. Um, if you're wanting to do it, say, on the back of a mirror, um, you can click the mirror option and that'll that'll switch it. Um, again, you would only use this in specific cases or, you know, if you like the mirrored look better than the original. Inverting, if you're going to do it on a dark surface, again, I don't, I don't use invert. Later on, it'll ask you if you're doing tile, um, and it'll invert it in that way. Auto adjustment, you can try it out per picture. I've, I've not um, typically used it. Gamma adjustment, the same. Contrast is one that I probably use the most. Um, there's a light background here, but say this was really, really dark. Um, we could try and adjust contrast um, to get a good contrast between our subject and the background um, so they don't blend together. Brightness is the same way, but it's over the entire the entire image. Something super, super dark, you might want to um, brighten the whole thing. But again, in this case, it just washes it out. So we're going to put this back down to zero. All right, and then denoise, which I have not used, sharpen. Um, if something's really blurry, sharpen can help it a little bit. And then comic filter um, <laughs> adds a style preference. Uh, it's not typically for me, um, but sometimes it might be for you. Um, you can add text in. I usually add text in Laserbox after the fact. Uh, material, this is really important. Um, CO2 and wood is what we're going to be selecting. Um, it has other various materials that it has a different uh, pre-process for. Um, I've used the tile ones and um, they're really 
really good um, if you're doing tiles, um, wood, acrylic, uh, glass. They have their old um, settings as well. The old wood is a little more comic-y um, than the new, so I, I just prefer the new CO2. And then there's grayscale, um, which is helpful if you're going to be either doing um, a dial laser or doing another um, process that has a grayscale import option. But we're going to do CO2 wood. All right, so you can see how it highlighted and added contrast. And those of you that are lip reading, <laughs> Audi went out, so I'm doing a voiceover. So the final step is download. Um, I use JPEG most often. If you're doing grayscale, um, you might do BMP. That is the file type you want to do in Laserbox if you're using the grayscale function. Um, after you've done that, just load it into Laserbox. I don't typically mess with these options. If you want to use Erase, you can use it um, to erase the background. We've already cropped, so we don't need to use that. Um, you can outline. I'm not a huge fan of the outline function, um, so let's just import the image. What you're seeing here is not going to be how it's going to turn out, so don't, <laughs> don't freak out preemptively. Again, you want to make sure that the, uh, the lock is uh, engaged so it scales proportionally in both directions. And then we're going to see what it looks like with our material. Put in your uh, material settings. And then there's advanced settings below. So this is 3mm uh, Baltic Birch, which I have a profile that I've created for. SD is the fastest, HD is a bit slower, and then 3D is when you're using grayscale and actually taking away uh, wood to create a raised appearance. So under the advanced settings, you can see the differences. So HD is 215, SD is 90, and this is the biggest uh, shift in your time you'll notice a quality change. Um, with wood, you don't necessarily want to bump that all the way up. Um, sometimes less is more because each of the lines um, may get hit multiple times since uh, the passes are so closely put together. So let's look at the time difference. So you can see it's 18 minutes for 90 lines per centimeter. And then HD is 215, and you'll see that that time difference is around 45 minutes. And I'm going to set it in between, so 150 um, lines per centimeter. And then, again, settings are your preference. Uh, my, my deep engrave is 60% power and around 265 for speed. Um, if you want to go, you know, even even higher, um, it'll it'll engrave even deeper, which sometimes that's the aesthetic you're looking for, um, and sometimes it's just going to make it look burnt. So the last thing we're going to need to do uh, is we're going to use the outline tool to create um, a cut line around the outside. So the outline tool is the dashed. Um, symbol over to the left. It auto draws an outline around the outside. So once we put in our cut settings, um, that's going to be, I, you know, prefer 45, 50% power, six millimeters per second for this three millimeter thick material. Um, we're going to resize this down to be the same size as our actual thing. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have left it a little larger, just so there's a bit of a border around the outside. Um, the way the picture is taken, the top of the head is just really close to the edge of the image. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, start it cutting. And you'll see the, the preview time is 33 minutes which is about in between the two. 
so it's it's uh, not as fast as our very uh, our standard and not nearly as long. I took around 30 second videos every five minutes just to give you a sense of how it looks. Looking back, I might have whited out some of the background, especially on the left side, but overall I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was deep enough that you can actually see some physical shadow um, and it looks pixely, I think, on the camera, but it actually looks less so in person. So cutting took around two minutes and it cut cleanly out. And here we are with the final piece. So again, if I were to do this another time, I might go a little bit darker and have a slightly larger border. Um, but as you can see, it is pretty simple to at least get your feet wet um, with images. Like I said, there's tons of tons of settings you can play around with um, to get your desired result um, but for me <laughs> for the for the cost of of looking at ads uh, it's totally worth it so as always thanks for liking subscribing uh, share with your friends that are trying to get into lasering um, and there are links in the description um, if you're going to get anything from the xtool website i have affiliate links and my go-to place for baltic birch those links are there as well. And as always, have fun lasering.